Hi there, my name is Gardner Bryant. I run a YouTube channel about free and open source software. I've made a career out of video editing on Linux, and I wanted to share some of the tips and tricks that I've learned with you. In this installment of video editing on Linux, I wanted to talk about the concept of proxy clips, uh, go over some of the performance considerations and pitfalls of using Caden Live with high resolution footage, as well as talk about the best ways to get good performance out of Caden Live. Now, as I mentioned in an earlier video, Caden Live is my favorite video editor for Linux but it does have a few drawbacks. The biggest one tends to be performance. If you get a decent laptop or desktop, uh, you're only editing 1080p footage and you're doing light effects, then you're not gonna have too much trouble with Caden Live. But if you're doing professional edits, uh, if you're applying complex effects or compositions uh, in your timeline, if you're doing color correction or working with 4K or higher footage, then you're gonna wanna follow some of the steps in this video uh, in order to get the best performance out of Caden Live. Even if you're not working at that level with complex effects and uh, you know high resolution footage, you probably get a lot out of watching this video anyway. First of all, GPU processing. If you have the right hardware, you can enable GPU processing. This can be a major boost to your performance, but it will require you to install the Move It library and might not be available from your distro's repo. Generally, this requires an NVIDIA GPU and it might be unstable on your system. Let's say for whatever reason, Move It library isn't working and you don't have hardware acceleration in Caden Live. Uh, what can you do? Proxy clips. Now, if you have a machine that's struggling to play back video from your timeline, or if you're having issues with effects being applied in real time, proxy clips might be just what you need. So what is a proxy clip? Well, to put it simply, it's a smaller, lightweight version of your original footage. A proxy clip has the same frame rate as the original clip, but with a lower resolution and bit rate. Proxies are used in lieu of the original high quality source clip to free up resources while editing and allow your machine to apply effects and compositions more freely. When it's time to render, any edits that you've made to your proxy clips in your timeline will be applied to the original high quality clips and they'll be used to export the final version. Now, proxy clips are a transparent way of increasing performance on your machine. Uh, they're especially useful if you're editing in 4K uh, and your PC needs a little extra help. There is one drawback though, and that is proxy clips are actually a, uh, a separate video file that needs to be transcoded from the original version. Uh, this can take time, especially if you have uh, a lot of small clips or if you have one long, like massive proxy that you need to make. Depending on the configuration of your hardware and the amount of uh, proxy clips you need to generate, uh, it can take tens of minutes, if not longer, to generate proxy clips. With all that being said, proxy clips can be enabled in one of two ways. First, on a per clip basis. Find the clip that you want to use in your project bin, right click on it and select the proxy clip option in the context menu. This will start the process of downsampling the clip. You'll also see a progress bar under the clip's time code. This progress bar shows how long until the proxy clip is finished rendering you'll see an indicator at the top of this panel showing that there are jobs running. Finally, you'll see a P indicator over the clip's thumbnail showing that it has a proxy clip in use. Generating proxy clips is a lot like exporting a project. It requires the video to be converted to another codec, and this can take a long time depending on the length and size of the clip and your CPU and GPU. Alternatively, you can set Caden Live up to generate clips automatically based on the size of the video file. Click on settings and then choose configure Caden Live. Then choose the proxy clips tab. From here, you can enable proxy clips and select the generate for videos larger than checkbox. You can then specify a minimum size uh, that you want to have rendered into a proxy clip. You can also select an encoding profile here. Note that there aren't many options because of the simple nature of proxy clips. If you have an AMD graphics card, select one of the profiles ending in VA API, which will enable hardware acceleration for the proxy clip encoding process. This will also work with certain onboard Intel graphics chips. Similarly, for NVIDIA graphics cards using the proprietary drivers, select a profile ending in NVENC to enable hardware acceleration in the encoding process. But be warned, if you want to use uh, VA API to accelerate your proxy clip or rendering performance, 8th gen or later Intel CPUs, you have to install a proprietary driver, the Intel Media VA driver non-free package, uh, in order to enable VA API support. One of the heaviest things you can do that impacts performance the most is applying real-time effects to your clips. 
Rotating, scaling, warping, or recoloring clips can all be rather resource intensive. Using proxy clips will help with this, but it's also worthwhile to adjust the preview resolution. Use this drop down box to set the preview resolution. Using a setting of 1 to 1 will be the project's native size. Changing it to any other of the presets will display the preview at the resolution specified, and thus effects will be more easily applied. But what if the effects you're applying are just too expensive and the computer can't handle it, even with proxy clips enabled? Well, that's where preview zones and preview rendering comes in. Using I and O in your timeline will allow you to set an in and out zone. You can also click on the little thumb here and drag it around and move the sides left and right with your cursor. By doing this, you can select a, a portion of your timeline that you want to be set as a preview zone. Once you have your in and out zones set, then you can use this button here and select add a preview zone. Keep in mind that you can have multiple preview zones in a single timeline. Then you can choose to render those zones, and if you make changes with those zones, they get re-rendered automatically. This process mixes down the video file to a near final state, mitigating the need for your computer to apply the effects in real time. This allows you to make informed decisions in your edit and lets you see what parts of each clip is being used. Now, when it comes to this Librem 14 laptop, I haven't had to do much to get the editing experience that I'm used to on my desktop. Now, I haven't been able to get the Move It library working on uh, my Librem 14, but it's able to handle editing uh, 4K footage natively, and it's only after applying real-time effects to the clips that I'm working with that I needed to reduce the preview resolution. Though I did uh, make all of my clips proxy clips as well. With all that said, that's everything that I wanted to cover in this video. Uh, if you like this video, if you think that it might be useful to someone who's trying to get into video editing, uh, send it their way. Maybe they will benefit from hearing something in this video. Uh, thank you very much for watching. If you like this video, maybe share it with a friend. Uh, maybe share this series with them. But that's going to do it for now. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next one.